Silicon Valley, technology, art, green, and sustainability. Welcome to another episode of Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I have Rebecca Bender, or Becky as you like to be called, and with the Silicon Valley United Nations Association. And thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. I think this is, I'm so honored to have you here this week. This is a great week to have you. There's a lot going on. This uh, is a very UN special and, week with yeah. everything that's going on at the United Nations yeah, right now. I, and I think it's just so important that you're here and talking about what you guys do. But before we thank do you. that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You're, are you from the Bay Area? Are you from, you know, are you from the U.S. originally? Tell, tell us about you. Sure. Uh, when I was a young kid, my dream when I was about yay high was to work for the United Nations. I suppose it was inspired by the stories that some little ladies who traveled all around the world enthralled me with. As I grew older, I wanted to become a foreign exchange student and looked for an opportunity and ended up in Japan with a family that didn't speak any English nor care to learn, and I didn't know a word of Japanese. So had it, was this after college? No, it was uh, the first year of okay. college. Okay. So that was baptism by fire. I uh, had a wonderful time. It changed my life dramatically. I came back to the US. I went to Berkeley, studied political science and oriental languages, particularly Japanese. But I knew that I wanted to work for the UN, so I tailored my education with that in mind. Then I accepted some scholarships to go to Japan for graduate school, where I completed my master's and PhD studying economics, politics, and law in Japanese rather than in English. Wow. And I was the first woman and the first non-Asian to ever pass the entrance exam to the top university in Japan. I don't know how, but anyway, somebody had to do it. So uh, while I was working on my degrees, I also worked for the prime minister's office and on something that is very timely now. At that time, the Indo-Chinese refugees were streaming out on boats and it was a big problem. And so I joined the prime minister's office to address that problem. I didn't finish my PhD dissertation because I was recruited by the UN sooner than I expected and I knew it wouldn't come twice, so I jumped at it, and I uh, accepted the appointment, didn't finish the dissertation, but oh And was well. that there or here um, that you? I was, uh, so the dissertation was in Japan, or okay. for a Japanese university. When I accepted the appointment to the UN, I moved to New York, and I worked okay. at headquarters in New York. So you were in the headquarters. So right. you were working for them at the headquarters, not in Japan. Correct. You came back. Correct. And then did you go, you went back again to Japan at some point? Oh, or? I've been back many times. Okay. Uh, but once I joined the United Nations, I was based in New York, but I worked all over the world. And it was fascinating. I worked in war zones, which was a, f a new experience for me, not particularly pleasant. Uh, and it gave me a chance to really understand how much of the rest of the world lives. And it also gave me first-hand experience of how grateful people are for what the United Nations does to help them even just survive. And the more work I did, the more passionate I became because I realized that while the United Nations may not be perfect, it's the best thing we have. And it successfully prevented World War III and it has helped increase the global standard of living for people. Now, did you have a photo you wanted to share from Japan? that? Did you want to sh oh, uh, share well, that? And uh, I suppose I could. Uh, this and is tell us about this, and I'll hold it up so this you can is talk just about it. And then this is just a funny one. Um, so we can hold this up so they can, Japan while you're talking about it. Japan was a very, very different experience. A very different language, culture, way of thinking, food, of course. This was my wedding photo. Uh, and I, I offer it only because it's so different from our life. The, another one here. The, the white one. hat. Uh, that I have on my hand, head in the second photo is to hide any horns of jealousy that might ever um, develop. And so that's 
tradition in Japan. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know when you showed this to me before. I didn't notice the difference. Yeah. And I didn't notice this was you at first too. Well, I it, it obviously it was doesn't look else, like me. Right? It's a black wig. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, so Thanks. how long did you live there again? So altogether, off and on, I lived in Japan about twelve years. Okay. Uh, doing lots of different things. Uh, and and I got married there, obviously, and then. Yes. And then mm -hmm. did your husband move back with you or? Yes. Okay. Uh, he, when I was appointed to the UN, he was given a choice and he accepted an appointment at the UN as well. That's awesome. So we got to work there together That's and that wonderful. was a wonderful experience. And then do you have children? No, no, no. No children. Mm -hmm. And is your family mostly East Coast or? My family's all over the world. All over the world. Okay. All over the world. Yeah. So tell us about um, the Silicon Valley United Nations. But before we go there, I'm going to pull up a slide. And we're going to look at a little bit about the UN first, and you sure. can tell us a little bit about it. So this is the first slide here, of course. This is sure. the famous. So this is the General Assembly, where all the heads of state come and give their uh, speeches during the third week of September each year. And this year, of course, Donald Trump and many other luminaries have given their speeches. OK, we can pull that one down. Let's bring up the next one, too. Uh, we got another, we got two more slides um, on the General UN. And the General Assembly is where many decisions get made. And it's how many? It's, it's 90, 193 countries. 193. Right. So this is directly from the, w the website. It's the key documents that you can click on, so this main is bodies. Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, my hero. And in 1958, or no, 48, uh, I'm, uh, 48, 42, 48. yeah. She um, drafted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Which there's this book here, apparently is one that um, you can, this is the cover of the book down below her that's on the UN website that you can okay. pick up to, to look sure. at that in the history and of the it. And the UN Charter was signed in, actually it was signed on October 24th of 1945. And it was at Roosevelt? The, that at the end of the war. And was it Roosevelt that... We could we could pull that that one down. It also has the resources there. Um, so was it? I think it was Roosevelt that pushed for the UN to go through, right? Pretty sure. Um, so on that that screen, and then we could pull up one more. Is mm -hmm. um, they're all links that you can click on on the UN site. All of these are links to, that go to other sites and other documents. On the other side here is issues and campaigns that they're working on. The one that I highlighted is refugees and migrants, and then there's some photos there. And then the, on the other side is the departments and offices and news and media, which I think is a very important one for me, obviously. We can pull that down. The refugee issue, obviously, is a really big one. So um, uh, on this topic, the UN addresses just about every single major problem that is of global relevance. Refugees, there's uh, 65 million refugees right now. Wow. Uh, all over the world, we, they're, um, any minute there are 20 people, each minute that are displaced from their home because of war, famine, or persecution. 80% um, of them are women or children, which is horrific. Um, it's- Because they're the ones that get displaced in right. any kind of, war or Holocaust or... Yeah. And if you think, well, how many people is 65 million? That's about twice as many people, almost twice as many people as every single person here in California. The, that amount of people have had to flee their home and are living pretty much a starvation situation. And the men are either fighting or they're dead. So that's right. why there are so many right. women refugees. Right. Yeah. And so UNHCR, which is one of the United Nations agencies, is very, very active in helping these refugees around the world. And UNHCR has um, activities in 130 countries. There are only 193 countries, so they're, they're, they're helping refugees in over 130 countries. And the budget a year is uh, $7.7 .7 billion. That's wow. $1 for each person on this globe. Uh, which, was, when you think of it, it's really not that much um, to help that many people. Um, so 4.3% of the world's population are refugees today. That's just staggering. It's staggering. It's, it's staggering. It's we take so much for granted. And, and we'll cross our fingers that it doesn't become more as yes. things escalate. Right. Um, so, uh, so tell us then about the Silicon Valley United Nations. and. You know, people can go to that website and look at all the many things the UN does, but specifically here, tell us about what you guys are doing here. Sure. So the United Nations associations were actually started even before the United Nations, and their purpose was to educate, inspire, 
and mobilize Americans to understand the principles of the UN and to support them. So there are over 140 chapters throughout the United States and also many more in other countries. The purpose is to be a grass, grassroots membership organization and to foster a better understanding of what the UN does around the world and to support the UN and to engage in advocacy. Uh, for instance, right now, uh, this administration has proposed slashing the UN budget by 40%. The UN budget is a minuscule part of our federal budget. I think it's uh, one-tenth of one percent. Um, and, and so yet, people should be outraged about that. Yes. That they should be completely outraged yes. about the fact that 40% of that budget is, is being proposed to cut. Right. Um, because it does, I mean, if you look at the things that we just listed that the UN does, it's so much, right? It's so 